So I wanted to create this review video because none of the ones that I watched before buying talked about some of the things that I'm going to be talking about today. I'm going to cover the ugly, the bad, and the good. And if you clicked on this video, I'm assuming that you already know a little bit about the machine, the specs, stuff like that. So I'm not going to start with any of that. But if you don't know that stuff, just stick around to the end and that's where I'll be covering it. And just to be clear before I start, this is a great coffee machine. All right, so now for the ugly. In this video, ugly just means gross. And the first experience that I had with something nasty with the TK1 was with the drip tray. It absolutely rocked my world and I don't think I'll ever forget it. I think they thought they were doing us a solid by making it hold so much liquid, but by the time the red buoy thing pops up to indicate that it's time to be emptied, the mixture of milk and water is absolutely vile. The first time I dumped it out, I wasn't yet aware that I was supposed to be holding my breath and I almost threw up. Then of course, the inside is also super slimy from whatever was starting to fester and it needs to be washed thoroughly. For comparison, this is the drip tray from the Breville Nespresso Creatista Plus and even this one gets a little bit slimy by the time it needs to be emptied out with regular daily use. If you mainly drink espresso or black coffee, it shouldn't be as bad, but my recommendation nonetheless is still to empty it sooner than later if you can remember to. Sometimes we keep a cup underneath and just empty that. Okay, so the next thing is about the spent grounds design and mechanism. Even when everything is perfectly in place, some grounds manage to escape the box that they're supposed to fall into. They honestly kind of get everywhere somehow, including on the door panel. It's a pain in the butt to clean just because the granules are so small, there's a lot of nooks and crannies, and they're straight up everywhere. And then because it's a moist environment and the door is typically closed, it starts to smell like mold. Guys, I did not even plan this, and this is my first time seeing this, but there it is in the flesh. Mold. Mold is like my arch nemesis, so this just makes my skin absolutely crawl. And just for good measure, of course, there's mold inside as well. Luckily, this does come out for cleaning, but I have got my work cut out for me. So yeah, don't skip your regular maintenance, guys. I would say the best way to combat this is obviously to clean more. I think even their website recommends to rinse the piece that pulls out like once a week. But other than that, I would say it would even be best to leave the door open to allow it to fully dry out between uses, which is not only annoying because it doesn't look that cool just to have one of the doors open all the time. It could also be like a space issue for some people if they have limited counter space, but also because unless fully powered down whenever the door is open, it beeps constantly. The beeping is also true if you remove the water tank or the drip tray. So like the whole time you're filling up water, you just have to listen to this beeping in the background. Would be nice if you could just touch the screen and let the system know that you're aware the door is open and to stop beeping. Another thing about the doors is because of the door's locations, you need to make sure that you have clearance on both sides of the machine to open the doors. The water tank is also pretty small. It only holds 57 ounces. So I find myself filling it up pretty frequently. The next thing is that in order to clean itself, so every time that it starts up or shuts down, it spews hot water, which causes a lot of splatter. Again, leaving a cup underneath can kind of help this, but it does kind of take away from that nice clean look. Then it seems like the heat of the steam has kind of damaged the plastic directly underneath which is kind of annoying. The next thing is that the machine in general requires a lot of cleaning and maintenance if you wanna keep it working well and sanitary. It makes really good coffee, so it's not really that big of a deal, but there's definitely more to it than I originally thought when purchasing. And lastly, nothing is dishwasher safe, so everything needs to be hand washed and sterilized. Okay, now to talk about the good. Before I talk about the features, I just wanna say that their customer service is incredible. Early on, we had an issue with the 
seal of the milk carafe and within a few emails they were able to quickly diagnose what the issue was and send us what we needed to fix it. Their team is super well educated on the machine and all replies were prompt and professional. They also have an amazing and extensive FAQ section on their website for any questions you might have or any issues that may arise. So as far as the machine itself, drinks are fully customizable and the UI is very user friendly. It works with any kind of milk and you can control how foamy or silky the milk is using the dial inside the water tank compartment. The machine also includes a water filter for healthier and better tasting coffee, and it has a warming tray for two mugs, which I think is so cool. The spout can be moved to fit most mugs, and the exact clearance is five and a half inches. By the way, you definitely need to utilize this for any frothed milk drinks, Otherwise, there will be foam everywhere. You can use whole or pre-ground coffee. The hopper holds 12 ounces of beans and it uses a conical stainless steel burr. The grind size can be controlled by the dial in the hopper. Their website says that by not using pods, their coffee is fresher, cheaper, and better for the environment. For the specs, I will just put a screenshot up on the screen for you to pause and read whatever you want, but that is it for the positives. Next up is the warranty. New machines have a one year or 3000 brew limited warranty, just whichever one comes first. No, I did not read it in order to make this video. So if you wanna know the specifics, I think you can access it from their website. You can also purchase one and two year extended warranties at the time of checkout for $100 and $145. Shipping. Currently, they only ship in the United States, but orders go out within three to five business days. And once my order was shipped, it arrived in two days to the Midwest. Shipping is free. And while we're talking about saving money, when I checked out, I used the code cool beans and it saved me $50. I tried to check if it works right now, but they have their five year anniversary sale going on where you save $100. So it doesn't work right now, but if you miss this sale, definitely try the code cool beans at checkout. Returns. You can return your machine as long as it's within the 30 day or 150 max brew trial period. There's a $55 restocking fee, and if you don't have the original packaging anymore, it's an additional $40 charge. Their website says that peripheral products and coffee cannot be returned, so I'm just assuming peripheral means anything that's not a machine. To return, you just have to reach out to their customer service, and they'll ask you why you're wanting to return it, and then they'll ask you to supply them a picture of the serial number and the coffee cup counter to make sure that you're under 150, and then they send you a prepaid shipping label and very detailed instructions on how to prepare, repackage, and ship your machine. You have to send it back within five days of receiving their email, and you also have to confirm shipment by sending them a picture of your FedEx receipt. So that is all I have for you. I hope the video was helpful, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them.